Hey hockey fans, welcome back. Welcome in if this is your first time to the channel. Lovely to have you. I'm Josh. This is the Hockey Flow and tonight it's Monday, May 30th, 2022. Hurricanes Rangers just wrapped up another excellent game seven and I tell you what, congrats Rangers fans. You guys are heading to the Eastern Conference Finals. Very exciting indeed. We're going to go through that game, get my observations from that. But first and foremost on today in hockey, we're going to be going through headlines. Then we'll get to my observations from the game tonight. Then we'll go through a preview and uh, you know what? We'll even pick a winner for tomorrow's game. And we're going to conclude the video with a really excited one, exciting one. We're heading back to the athletic, baby. This time we're looking at Shane Wright's competition for the number one overall pick, Juraj Slavkovsky. And I tell you what, after reading this article and seeing his performances, I might be a believer. So um, hang around for that. <clears throat> If you do enjoy the content, please take a moment, like the video, and go ahead, subscribe to the channel. We uh, do have a giveaway going on as well, but I really do appreciate the support um, as we keep bringing you videos each day. But without further ado, let's jump right into it, shall we? All right, headlines first and foremost. Today we did have some NHL draft news. The combine did start, and Shane Wright, the uh, projected number one overall pick, he is attending, so that's exciting news. And he is set to interview with 12 different teams. So can't imagine many of those 12 are going to have a shot at him. Probably going to go either number one or number two. And you know, up until recently, it has been just a one-horse race for that number one overall pick. But we'll get into that in uh, just a little bit. Other headline today: Vancouver Canucks fans, you guys should be excited. The Sedin twins. I know we were already part of the uh, uh, organization, but now they're transitioning into a player development role. So that's very exciting for them. Uh, just just legends of, of Canucks fanhood. So um, I'm, I'm happy to see them still working with the organization and um, you know giving their two cents because those are, are two absolute hockey legends indeed. That's going to do it for headlines though. Let's move forward into our observations from today. We did have just one game, New York Rangers and Carolina Hurricanes. The uh, Rangers did end up winning 6-2. Wasn't much of a game to be honest. Uh, these are my four observations from it. Um, first and foremost, what happened to Carolina this series? Uh, this is their first home loss of the postseason, but tell you what, they, they probably should have lost one earlier if they'd been playing like this. Um, it, it was just not a not a good game for them in any facet. Um, they did have a couple of injuries. Auntie Ranta did uh, leave early on and Jarvis left, um, oh boy, early in the first period even. Another Jacob Truba hit. Um, <laughs> I think he truly is becoming the, the most hated player in the NHL right now. It seems like every series he's hitting someone um, you know, we're talking about him in, in a negative light. So uh, Rangers fans, you know, let me know in the comments what you think of Mr. Truba. You think these hits are dirty? I, the one tonight on Jarvis seemed fair. It was just, you know, he's a lot bigger, a lot bigger person. But um, <clears throat> next up, we do have Kreider. He, he's back on back in form, it looks like. Uh, did have a couple of goals today. Nice, excellent redirect uh, early on. Um, and he just looked better. <clears throat> I know a lot of his game is in front of the net and, and poaching goals and, and of that nature, but um, he hasn't done a lot of that yet this postseason. He only had three shots on goal total the last uh, previous road games up until this point. So to see him get two goals tonight, excellent for him. Uh, and last but not least, the kid line plays great again. Man, Laffy looked great. Um, he had an assist tonight, and Hedo had another goal uh, later on. So I, I got to say, Rangers fans, you guys should be excited about this this future. You know, this kid line, um, all of them, I believe they said were 21 and under, if that's right. Um, might be 24, but let me know in the comments, Rangers fans. But either way, um, it's nice to see them rounding out into form. Kako looked okay too. So uh, Rangers fans, you guys should be excited. Don't uh, have a, a lot of resting time between now and your series with the Lightning, but um, quick turnaround, couple days. But um, I'm excited for that series. I think you guys will fare well. Um, yeah, let's move on. We got our picks for tomorrow and including tonight's game. I did update the record. Yay. We are 34-19. And I tell you what, moving into this series, Avs Oilers, I think it's going to be an excellent series. Uh, I think it's going to be closer than people are going to put on paper, right? It's just like the Flames Oilers series. Uh, the Flames were, were picked to win by almost everyone. I, I tell you what, as an Oilers fan, of course, let's go Oilers, baby. But even just as an impartial hockey fan, um, I think the Oilers are going to give the Avalanche all they can handle. Um, the Avs haven't played that great this postseason. We did see um, some some um, holes in their armor, if you will. So um, I am going to pick the Oilers, baby. Avs didn't start last series that great, uh, squeaked one out over the Blues. So why not? Oilers can steal one at, uh, on the road, start out 1-0 series lead. We're going with the Oilers for the game and the series, baby. Let's go, Oilers! 
All right, let's move into the fun part. I love these article deep dives, man. All right, we're heading back to The Athletic. They are a pay-to-subscribe website, so we absolutely want to try to bring you as much as we can from them. Uh, a lot of great articles. This one is entitled, Juraj Slavkovsky's Unique Skill Set Could Make Him a Potential First Pick for the Canadians. And uh, this one's brought to us by Mark Anton Godin. And I tell you what, I didn't even think this was going to be a conversation, not even maybe two weeks ago. And I'm a big fan of Slavkovsky. He, he, his game, he's a moose out there. 6'4", 220, but he glides all over the ice, and he's got excellent puck handling skills. He can skate beautifully. Um, <clears throat> it's just one of those things where Shane Wright is just Shane Wright. He's uh, Mr. Consistent and always makes the right play, and that's where this article begins, right? It, it talks about how Shane Wright, it, he's not going to wow you necessarily, and that's been the book on him. He's not going to wow you, but he does a lot of things really well and a couple of things excellent, and in that consistency, he's got a really uh, low floor, if you will. High ceiling with a low floor, which is very enticing. And um, essentially, Urash here, he's the antithesis, and, and that's what Mr. Godin says to us. He's the antithesis to Shane Wright. Um, <clears throat> essentially right, calculated, always makes the right decision. Yurash, he does leave your jaw on the floor occasionally. Like, you see him do something, and you're just like, oh my gosh, what did I just see? But then other times, he leaves you scratching your head, like, why did you make that choice? You know, the easy pass, the, the simple pass is sometimes the best pass, right? Um, we did talk about Shane Wright in an earlier video. I will leave that uh, link down in the description for you guys as well, because that was really neat. And one of the knocks on Shane Wright is that he always makes the right play, but sometimes you want him to make the really exciting play like the really good play was available and he made the less good play but it was maybe the right play like you want to see that risk and Yuraj does that he takes that risk um, but you also would like to see some maybe better decisions at times um, but uh, this article is wonderful it breaks down why Yuraj is so um, strong and why we are talking about him as the potential number one overall pick or maybe why the Canadians are wanting to trade for that number two overall pick uh, but first and foremost it's his puck protection as I mentioned he's 6'4 220 um, but he's got agility with his hands and skating and if you look at highlights from him that is an area that he absolutely excels. And the article talks about how um, him playing against grown men over in Finland really helped this last season because if he was playing against uh, lower level of talent and, and lower, uh, less matured athletes, he would have just dominated physically. So playing against grown men, he couldn't just dominate them physically. He had to um, lean into his skill and develop his game, which is what you want to see, right? And uh, the agility with his hands and his feet, it's just incredible to watch. Um, how he can get pucks out of uh, tight areas. He had a highlight reel play as well. Um, but the other area that he really excels at is carrying the puck, entering the zone. Um, you would look at his stats even in this most recent uh, IIHF. We did another video on that as well. Definitely check that out. Um, we'll, we'll, uh, no spoilers. Did Yuraj make our top five standouts? I don't know. A lot of really great performances. But Yuraj was excellent too. He had seven goals, no assists. And on the um, you know, on the front of that, you would think, oh, he's just a finisher then. He's not a playmaker. Well, it's kind of the opposite. It. Um, a lot of it is he is a finisher. He, he has got a nose for goal and he's always going to the net, but um, he does make excellent plays too. It's also depends on the level of teammates, I guess you could say. Um, the article makes mention of when he was playing with Tatar, how you could see that intricate back and forth, and it was beautiful, and how he would go to the right spots, but then there are other times when maybe he's with lesser talent where he tries to do too much by himself, so it'll be really interesting to see what he is like in the NHL, especially on the smaller rink, and that's another point that uh, Mr. Godin makes makes um, several times, but um, you know, at the end of the day, you need your players to make great decisions, especially if they're carrying the puck into the zone. I don't think the expectation is to have him being playing, or have him playing at center it would be on the wing um, but he would be a dominant winger and tell you what Canadians fans if you can somehow get the first and second overall picks without losing Cole Caulfield I, I hats off otherwise New Jersey Devils fans I think you guys would be ecstatic with with your he is an excellent player um, but let me know in the comments Canadian fans have have we uh, changed your mind do you think they should take your over Shane Wright um, what are we thinking as the draft gets a little closer coming up in July but let me know in the comments um, that's going to do it for the video today we do have a giveaway going on race to 100 subscribers so please take a moment if you are watching made it to the end thank you so much uh, take a moment go ahead subscribe to the channel you should see a little icon pop up at some point um, once we hit 100 subscribers we're going to be giving something away hockey related going to be probably a jersey or an autograph maybe a gift card um, as we get closer i'll let you guys know but um, again thank you so much for all the support we'll be coming back to you daily so uh, until tomorrow cheers <laughs>